we started the project, our mindset was just enjoying the creative process and making something cool, making a game that we wanted to play. Unfortunately for us, that was like a competitive, hardcore, online, big game that is really challenging to make. So for us, I mean, if someone would have told us in the beginning of the project that we'll get to, we'll end up launching on PS4, we would have been like so happy. That would have been like the dream come true. When I was a kid, I really wanted to learn fighting, like Muay Thai and stuff. And my mom took me to a, a club. My coach at the time said, I'm sorry, ma'am, I, I don't train children. This is a full contact sport. And my mom, she like leaned over the counter and he's like a big tough guy. And she's like, you're taking him because he's gonna, it's gonna drive me crazy at home if you don't, right? And um, it, it was fun. And then the only condition was he's like, he asked to keep up with the grown ups. So I was like carrying around some 150 pound grown up, scared that if my heels touch the ground, I'm gonna get kicked out of the gym, you know? So it, I kept going, I kept going. I trained as much as I could. And then when I was older, I was able to make the national team. And I think it was through all that, you know, adversity and hard work. at home and you're working at home is it's really difficult because you have this other baby this project that is kind of waiting for you and your computer is there kind of taunting you right you can only not sleep for so long or sleep three hour four hour days for so long until your body kind of like tells you hey you know relax buddy I'm really passionate about what I do. I find the time, I make it work. I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> but working with these guys, I don't know, I, I, they give me an energy to really like go that extra mile and just stay up a little later to finish, finish the work. Everything I do, luckily I really enjoy, so I, I don't, you know, the hours just kind of get away from me. worked three years, it's probably four years, on getting the PS3 version ready. Sony approached us and asked us if we wanted to be a launch indie game on their, their new console. It meant rebuilding the whole game, which was pretty crazy, but we couldn't pass up this opportunity. Vancouver job market took a real turn for the worst. Most studios were moving east, Toronto or Montreal, because their uh, tax credits are, are way better. At that time, Afusu saw the opportunity to create something new and challenge himself, and I, I saw opportunity to, to help him out with that. And it was a small, talented team, and we, we saw an opportunity to, to make a game that we really wanted to play. I remember first time meeting Yusuf at his place, and he has his laptop up, and then he has a game up. And I was like, you know, I don't, like, indie project, I don't know what to expect. And then I, I, I played a first version of Poncho, and the game basically was no, no texture, no color, gray models, very, very simple. But what, what's really cool about it is all the mechanics are already in. Yusuf already have the game, and it was actually really fun. Nick's used to show me the concept by Jose and I was like well this is the style that's awesome that really pulled me in and I didn't know why I wouldn't want to work on this project I was just so excited for it and I went home one day told my wife like you know I'm not gonna look for a job I think I found something really cool I want to work on Yusuf and I used to get together and play a lot of Soul Calibur together that was kind of our thing sure he kind of got me inspired into like things like boxing and, and and fighting games and he would talk about making games and I thought it was really really interesting because I had played games but I had never made games and it was kind of interesting to get insight into how things went together and then 
he just, you know, would kind of drop ideas like, oh, you know, we should, it would be cool if we made a game like this, right? And we'd have these kind of pipe dreams. And that's kind of the seed of where Switchblade Monkeys begins. I think Yusuf's drive is the thing that I kind of attached to because I felt like he could get it done. Because people always talk, but it's hard to tell who can like get something and see it through to the finish. And with him, I could kind of see that, that drive inside of him with everything that he does. It just gave me the confidence to say like, I'm on, if you think you can do this, then I'm on board. I think about that a lot when we're taking on, you know, it's, it's just like, you can't tell, are you reaching for the sky or are you taking on more than you can chew? Like, how do you know? Like, you just gotta think I'm reaching for the sky and you, you gotta believe in yourself that that process of reaching for the sky and doing everything you can is gonna grow you and make, make something. With such a small team, if I took a break today, something's not getting done. If I if I take a weekend off, you know, and a coder is waiting for my work, it it cascades into this whole week of no, no progress, right? So it's like you know an intense kind of grind to to get a final product. Good. Switchblade monkeys. This crew came together when a group of friends across multiple studios around the world broke off to pursue a new creative vision. Secret Ponchos blends the best elements of shooters and fighting games into a super stylish spaghetti western. PS4 launch was exciting. It was the first game I'd ever worked on, and it was going to be on PlayStation. A lot of people downloaded it. I was pretty excited to get the exposure. It was a little bit of a trying experience, um, the launch, because it didn't go as smoothly as we'd hoped, and it, it, it was a lot of work immediately after the launch, so it was kind of a little bit anticlimactic in that it was exciting that it happened, but the workload kind of increased a lot from that point in order for us to continue and to try and make the game successful. The PS4 launch, which we had some, some major hiccups that we were, we did our best to overcome. We really lost our opportunity on there to, to gain some momentum and gain some, uh, some players that wanted to continue to play. When you launch a game, it's like finishing a marathon. So you're just crunching and crunching and crunching and you know the end is in sight. Imagine all of a sudden, when you think you're gonna finish, you realize you have another 10 kilometers ahead of you and you just can't even worry about it. You just have to, you just have to go. Now, that's how it felt. Um, usually after a launch, there's a recovery period. But for us, it was like an, another crunch just began. The programming team, Nick, Darren, and Eddie, immediately started fighting the fires, and then we set our goals on doing this thing right for the PC launch. Attending EVO for us was a very pivotal moment in our, in our mindset of making the game. We've been to a lot of consumer events, like E3, PAX, all those things, but those are trade shows where it's like a magazine where everything's an ad, and um, people are just excited to flip through all the ads of all the new stuff. That's what those events are about. EVO is a celebration of your gameplay skills, and they're not hyping new games. People are playing Street Fighter 4 or Mortal Kombat or Marvel vs. Capcom. It's about the skills of the players and how what they can do with the mechanic. They were just like looking at the hitboxes and the mechanics and how you fight and the spacing and the fundamentals and they're like, yeah, we get this, this is really cool. Your game is gonna be successful, it just needs to be discovered and how can we help you? Going to EVO we really opened my eyes to what the game could be. For my own sanity, I haven't set it up on a high pedestal. It is, yeah, it's never been about fame or, or real f like financial reward or like it, it's, it hasn't been about that. It's, it's just been 
an amazing journey working with these, this group of guys on, on such a creative and, and amazing project. And being able to build such a strong team is, is that's the, the success, I think, of, of it all. We made a game that is much bigger than what we should have been able to make. And we put everything we had into making those, those characters and that experience deep and awesome and high quality. If that is successful, we're going to be able to add more content at that level. If it's not, then the game will be what it is. Like, it, you know, it might, might disappear or people might remember it later. Our goal is that we can continue in expanding this game and that's what our community wants, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to take a lot, you know, we got to really make this PC launch a success. It's gone over several deadlines as it was supposed to be a two-year project, it was supposed to be a three-year project, and as the game was progressing, there's opportunities that arise that I just had to go with. Life won't wait, so I, you know, I went for it and I just decided myself that I'll, I can get through it, it's just another six months or it's just another eight months and I can't do that forever, but you know, I got, I got, I got a little more in me, that's for sure. As a business, success is not measured by how awesome the product is. The success is measured by how it, how well it does financially, right? So that's the thing that you know really, really taunts at me every day when I work. It's like, are we making the right choice? Would this help us financially so we can keep working on it? If I can go to work the next day after the game release, and there's a concept you know, in front of me, and, and I know I can work on it, and I can finish it, and, and then the fans can get to play it in a month or two, I think the game is successful. It means we're making money, it means we can keep everybody employed, and everybody can keep working on it. And that, for me, is the success of Ponchos, I guess. <laughs> Opportunity and a challenge that that I feel has has helped me grow as a professional and individual. What else is there in life but to take challenges like this? This five-year journey wasn't about pumping out games for a profit for us. It was, it was about something much deeper and it was more personal. It was about the answer to this question. What can this small group of friends achieve if we put our all into it? What are we capable of creating? Oh my god, that was so fun. Wow.